Patch 1324B is live until January 10th, meaning there's still a week and a half to climb this patch. Today, I'm going to show you how to optimally play 5 of the most popular comps and how to counter them with positioning. This is a very flexible meta, so lots of these comps have a lot of variations. You want to play the one that best fits the units and headliner that you hit. Alright, ENOUGH TALK! Six Sentinel Ari has taken over as the top comp of the patch, featuring Ari as a single target KDA Spellweaver. Her first cast on a target hits with a short stun, and any casts after that hit extra hard. Our frontline is 6 sentinels, which give the team a ton of armor and MR. Our main tank is Blitzcrank, who gives himself a big shield. You can take any headliner for Ari or Blitzcrank, except Disco. Fill the rest of our board with KDA, Spellweavers, and Sentinels, whichever trait you're missing. Each of these boards has a flex spot, which can be any legendary. Kiana is super good in this comp, as she can generate tank items for all 6 of your sentinels. You can also go for a 5 Spellweaver, 5 KDA, or play a second copy of Sentinel. Get Sona in whenever you hit her, and play the blue form, giving us infinite attack speed and on-hit damage as our frontline already lives forever. For items, we really want blue buff and Nasher's Tooth to synergize with her low mana cost, as well as Gunblade to heal up our sentinels. We then want an Ionic Spark on our main tank, with that Gunblade keeping them alive. Usually I say go for Spark or Shiv, however, here we prefer Spark for a few reasons. First, with blue buff, Ari instantly casts, and Spark shreds immediately, getting value, while Shiv takes 3 autos to shred. Second, since we really want blue buff and Nashers, we want to save that bow and tear that goes into Shiv. For the last two items, Blitzcrank and Sentinels in general want tank items that have health or special effects, rather than focusing on flat armor and MR, since Sentinel already gives you so much. My favorite combo is Crown Guard and Steadfast Heart, since the tank stats from Sentinel make it really hard to chip down the shield, plus 50% of Blitz's HP, meaning you have that damage reduction and spark up forever. The bonus AP after the Crown Guard shield breaks makes Blitz's shields even stronger. For augments, any combat augment is great. Augments that give you health or healing like Bulk, Vampirism, and Martyr are amazing since they synergize well with the Sentinel's stats. Our game plan is to play flexibly around strong headliners until we make it to level 8. Both win or loss streak is fine, although losing early can help you secure 2 tiers. Get to level 8 sometime in stage 4 and roll down for a headliner Ari or Blitzcrank. If you miss Ari, blue buff, Nashers, and Gunblade are super flexible items, so play around the headliner and units that you hit. Here are some positioning tips. Make sure your Spark and Ari are hitting the same unit at the same time. Generally, place your Ari in a corner or backline KDA Hex. One trick is that since blue buff gives Ari a damage bonus whenever she kills a unit, you prefer to have her sighted against the opponent's weakest frontliners to get the bonus ASAP. You can consider solo frontlining Blitzcrank, especially when he's 2-starred. This is best when you have Crown Guard to get the full value, or if you know you're stronger than everyone else and want to deal maximum player damage since it scales based on units left alive. Since Blitzcrank is the only one getting hit, he is going to be the priority for the healing from Gunblade, synergizing amazingly with the damage reduction and stats. Another benefit is that you can keep Echo Safer, who actually has an AoE stun on his ability, which can be really useful against melee carries like Yone and Riven. This is a bit of a risky play though, as sacrificing your other Sentinels instead might keep your Ionic Spark alive longer, which is also very important. That was a lot of tricks. Here's some more. How do we counter this comp? You need 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 shred, as lobbies will be full of sentinels. Position your strongest tank against Ari first so she doesn't get benefits from blue buff. If you have a Kiana, place her under your main tank so she can print items from safety. Since Ari is strictly single target, pumping your units is fine. If you're playing a melee carry, consider building QSS so you don't get stunned by her ability. Finally, you can play Karthus and KDA Akali as a counter comp to knock her out first and deal with the sentinels later. Make sure to give Akali red buff to cut off her healing from Gunblade, making her a target for Karthus. Ezreal's ability makes him blink away from his target dealing some damage, and every third cast, he shoots a wide barrage hitting super hard. Caitlyn's ability fires sniper shots at her four furthest enemies but can be blocked by any units in front. Big Shot gives Ezreal lots of AD, and Rapid Fire and 8-Bit give Caitlyn attack speed and AD. This comp is very flexible with lots of variations. Our backline can comprise of Ezreal with four Big Shots, Ezreal with Caitlyn, or Ezreal with just about any carry. All these boards are strong, so play around whichever headliner and units you hit at level 8. Your frontline is basically made of packages of traits. These are Blitz, Echo, or Garen for Sentinel, True Damage, or 8-Bits, Yorick and Thresh for Guardian, Poppy or Set for Mosher, and Zac or Laoi for Bruiser. Mix and mash these traits for your frontline, and don't be afraid to take a 4-cost headliner tank as well. Ezreal really wants blue buff, and then can take any AD or damage items. Red buff is super good on him, since he has a big AoE. Caitlyn also likes red buff, as the attack speed helps her cast faster and she can apply anti-heal to backliners, making them more likely to die to her next group of shots. 
Any other two items are fine. Shoujin is okay on the Caitlyn, but red buff is better. Finally, your tank can grab any items, but make sure you have an Even Shroud or Last Whisper on your board. Even Shroud is a little better since you can get more damage items in your carry, but Last Whisper is still pretty good. All combat augments are good, and I'd like to highlight item augments like You Have My Sword and Bow, Stimpak, Caretakers, and Binary, so you can itemize your tank and both Ezreal and Caitlyn. The game plan is similar to the rest of the standard comps, where we can play our strongest board or sacrifice HP to get bows on Carousel for red buff. Scale up around AD or tank headliners, with Corky being able to carry you really far. Level to 8 sometime on stage 4, and roll down for your board, playing whichever good units you hit. For positioning, put your Ezreal and Caitlyn on the same side as your Even Shroud. Reserve the corner for your second carry to keep them safe, as Ezreal jumps around anyway. Ezreal's third cast shoots at his target in a straight line, so generally you want to be on the opposite side of the enemy corner carry, hitting the max amount of units. Caitlyn is a little tricky, since her shots can be blocked. Generally, you want her on the same side as your other carry, opposite of the enemy, so they both hit the shredded targets. However, if you want some more tricks to maximize Caitlyn, I recommend checking out my friend Garchomp Pro's Positioning Every Unit video, where he details how you can position Caitlyn and even your frontline to maximize her line of sight. There are a few things you can do to position against this comp. Try to stick to the same side as Ezreal and Caitlyn to avoid getting hit by pot shots. Consider spacing out your frontliners so that Ezreal doesn't hit everyone with his third cast. This can also help block Caitlyn shots for your corner carries. You can also place your carry in the middle and use corner bait to tank the Caitlyn shots. 6 True Damage is the strongest damage vertical on the patch, especially if you had a True Damage emblem. The traits pair well with Caitlyn, who becomes a monster with a True Damage emblem. You want to play for this board with 6 True Damage, whether it's through getting a True Damage Headliner, an emblem, or both. Fill in any gaps of traits you don't have to get 6 True Damage and both of Caitlyn's traits in. With an emblem, you can drop Yasuo and then Kennen once you hit Kiana, and play whichever frontliners you get. Executioner for Akali is nice to have, but not necessary. Fill the rest of your board with strong frontline packages like Thresh or Yorick for Guardian. Looking at Akali's items, any AD items are fine. You can also try to get blue buff or 40 AP onto her. Check out my latest video to find out why. Caitlyn's items are red buff and 2 damage, same as in the Ezreal comp. Take items go on whoever you hit, and grab an even shroud on them or even on Akali if you can. For augments, just about anything combat is good. Just like Ezreal Caitlyn, item augments are really good since we can get items on all of our carries to get that true damage bonus. For our game plan, once again you play pretty flexibly. Definitely consider lose streaking in the early game so you can snag a spatula off the carousel if you're lucky. Play around headliners up until level 8 and roll down for headliner Akali or Caitlyn. Slot in Kiana whenever you can. If you get there, you can swap out Caitlyn for another legendary like Jin or Lucian. For positioning, put your tanks in the first row and leave slots for Akali and Kiana to walk up and deal damage. Make sure Akali and Caitlyn are attacking the same target aligned with any armor shred you have. For tricks for positioning with and against Caitlyn, check out the Big Shot Ezreal section of this video. Against this comp, match your strongest carries and tanks directly against Akali and Kiana to kill them as fast as possible. This also keeps your cornered carry from getting hit by Caitlyn early in the fight. Since Akali throws her blades in a cone, avoid clumping and isolate your tank if you can. This prevents her from getting the mana refresh since it increases based on how many units survive it up to 3. One last note, there's a big notion that a lot of people are opening or playing no units in stage 2 in order to snag a true damage emblem. Use this to your advantage and play for a win streak with strong headliners and augments. Jax leaps onto the scene as a strong 2 cost reroll. His ability makes him leap at the highest health enemy, dealing damage to them and surrounding enemies, and then gives himself 10% AD and AP, stacking until the end of combat. His monster trait gives him attack speed and lifesteal, based on his missing health, and the EDM trait makes other EDM units copy Jax's leap strike, dealing damage and also gaining stats. Your secondary carry is Lux, who fires a beam of light at her furthest enemy. We use the EDM selector on Jax, since his ability frequency got buffed to only 7 seconds, and the copied ability uses the ratio of the selected units. At 3 star, Jax's copied ability is at a massive 520% AP ratio. After the EDM units copy his jump, they jump back to where they were, keeping Lux safe. They also gain 10 AD and AP every time they jump. We want to take EDM Headliner Jax, as this gives us access to 5 EDM, reducing the ability copy frequency to 2 seconds. Fill out your board with every EDM unit, set for Mosher and Bruiser, Bard for Dazzler, and any crowd diver. From here, we can level for Jazz and Legendaries. For items, Jax wants Hand of Justice for Lifesteal and Crit, a Jewel Gauntlet for damage, and melee carry items like Bloodthirsters, Titans, and Edge of Night. For Lux, you want a Jewel Gauntlet as this activates on her ability and when she copies Jax Leap. After that, you want raw AP or utility items like Morello, Red Buff, or Shiv for Shred. Shiv is actually better than Spark here. This is because Shiv can spread to units behind the target, and since your EDM units usually leap to different units each time, you hit units that would get shredded by Shiv but not Spark pretty often. This is also true with Lux's laser. Tank items go on Zack. I would prioritize items for Jax, then Lux, then your tank. 
For Augments, Jewel Lotus is extremely strong as it lets all of your EDM units crit on their Jax Leap. Idealism is great to give Hodge to Jax, Lux, and Zed. Horn items are great with Zonia's Jax being one of the best combinations in the game. In the early game, play like usual, picking up any units for your comp you see. Level to 6 at 3-2 and 7 at 4-1. Unlike most 2 cost reroll comps, we roll on level 7. This is because we need to hit a bunch of our 4 costs while we roll, namely Zack, Zed, and Poppy. This also gives us higher odds to hit Lux 3 while keeping decent odds for Jax. Once you 3 star both Jax and Lux, you can push levels for more traits and frontliners. For positioning, place set in the top right or top left corner to take the cornered carry. Place Jax next to him in the front. This makes it so that Jax doesn't waste time walking up and takes a little damage for mana, but doesn't take the enemy carry's damage immediately. Next, put Zack next to him to soak up damage and Zed next to Zack in the middle. Finally, you can place Lux in the second row right behind Jax. This placement maximizes the Jax ability to leave damage, making all of them able to hit the backline. This is because Jax's ability leaps to anyone within the unit's base range, plus one, and Lux is a ranged unit, meaning she can jump straight onto the backline if she's in the second row. Positioning like this can cheese out kills on the cornered enemy carry, especially in the mid game. To learn more about EDM, I recommend reading this Reddit thread by C. Lao and watching this video by Leduc. To counter this comp, study where the opponent places their Jax and try to keep your carry three hexes away so they don't get jumped on. You can do this by placing your carry in the middle if he's cornered, and corner if he's in the middle. Since Jax scales every time he casts, you want to kill him as soon as possible, preferring to be on the same side. However, because of this you can get cheesed by the second row strategy mentioned before. To counter this, make sure you have very beefy frontliners within the range of your carries so they get jumped on first. Jax and Lux both attack any 1 hex AoE, so avoid clumping if you can. What you do want to always do is avoid being on the exact opposite side or corner of Lux, as Lux will always target her furthest enemy and can delete you in seconds. Yone is a very strong 3 cost melee carry this patch. His ability swipes twice in a cone and gives him move speed and lifesteal that stacks until the end of combat. Edgelords gain attack speed and dash through enemies at half health. Crowd Divers gain bonus damage stacking per second alive and stun the furthest enemy when they die. Finally, Heartsteal is an economy trait that gives you a cash out every 4 rounds it's played. While you can play an Edgelord variant, Crowd Diver is the best by far since you can go for 6 Crowd Divers with Kiana. Your board is 4 to 6 Crowd Divers, 3 to 5 Edgelords, an Echo and Mordekaiser as your tanks. Yone's best items are the Hodge IE combo plus Edge of Night. After that, itemize Zed as your secondary carry with any AD Bruiser items. If you can grab an Even Shroud or Last Whisper, place it on Viego since he slams into a bunch of enemies. For Augments, any combat Augments are great, with Jeweled Lotus and Lifesteal Augments being the best. You want to avoid Econ Augments since you're only rolling for Yone 3. Our game plan is pretty flexible. Since Yone is a Heartsteal, you should play Heartsteal as soon as possible to generate the extra cash and items. Get to level 7 in stage 4 and roll down to 50 gold each turn. You can play 5 Heartsteal in the mid game and transition into the Yone board once you reach 40 health. After Yone 3, go to 9 as soon as possible for odds to hit Kiana, adding in a random frontliner or legendary at 8 and replacing them with 6 crowd divers at 9. Position all your crowd divers except Katarina in a line with Yone being in the top left or top right corner. Place Zed to the side of Yone so they attack the same units. Kiana can go in the middle in the first or second row to print items as soon as possible. Since edgelords gain bonus attack speed whenever their target is below half health, you want to get your edgelords against the opponent's weakest frontliners first to get that bonus quicker and quicker. To counter this comp, position your strongest tank directly against Yone. This prevents him from getting a ton of attack speed from edgelord. If your board is strong enough, consider also placing your strongest carries against him to stop him as soon as possible. Generally, Yone 3 wrecks other melee carries but loses a strong ranged carries, so keep that in mind. If you're playing a ranged carry, consider centering them and using corner bait to avoid the stun from Crowd Diver, which always stuns the furthest unit from their point of death. If you're playing an Echo as a secondary tank, you can place him behind your primary tank, as his ability casts a big stun that is perfect for keeping Yone down. Daily Double! While you roll for Yone, you might come across a bunch of Rivens. You can then pivot into Riven Reroll. Riven's ability gives her a shield and makes her attacks deal bonus damage in an area of effect. Your board is 5 Edgelords and 4 Apits along with Mordekaiser for Sentinel Frontline. Either headliner for Riven is fine, but if you have the 8-bit headliner and hit an 8-bit emblem, you can put 8-bit on Viego and go for 6-8-bit, which is extremely strong. Riven items are the same, except you really want a QSS on her since she's very auto-attack based. The item priority is Riven, then Viego, then Caitlyn. Again, all combat augments are good, and avoid econ augments. Position like this, leaving slots for your edgelords to walk up and hit while your tanks tank. Same concept as Yone applies, where you want to be on the same side as the opponent's weakest frontliners. Transition! Have you tried out these compositions? Did you first? Did you eighth? Was this video a bait? You're the best, you're the best, what should I cover next? 
Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't die to Krugs. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year and climb on.